we are about to get controversial about NBA All-Star Reserves. We're going to start out with the Eastern Conference. I'm going to have another video with the Western Conference coming probably tomorrow. I'm going to let this one breathe a little bit. But the reason why I said, are you ready to get controversial? Guys, there are some locks in here, no doubt. And I will tell you exactly my confidence level about each of these picks. Someone's going to be mad. That's why I said that. I know you can't please everybody. Anybody who's picking an all-star team, all-star reserves, somebody's going to get snubbed. Snubs are inevitable. And before we start out, we must distinguish the criteria for how these teams are selected. First of all, the NBA does not understand where certain players play on the court in terms of positions. As many of you guys know, the voting is split between backcourt and frontcourt players. How we decide that DeMar DeRozan is a backcourt player and Paul George is a frontcourt player, I have no fucking clue. For the all-star reserves, you get two backcourt players, you get three frontcourt players, and then you get two wild cards. My reserve backcourt, this was the easiest part of the entire equation. I picked Jalen Brown, Tyrese Halliburton, Jalen Brown, obvious second star on the number one team in basketball so far this year. He's been present and healthy throughout the season, averaging by far a career high 27 points per game. Obvious pick, Tyrese Halliburton, pure point god, floor general. And if you want any indication of just how valuable of a player Tyrese Halliburton has been to this team, look no further than what this team does when he's not playing. Because the fall off, it's not hard to see. But Tyrese plays the game the right way. Incredibly unselfish player, while also scoring high volume from the three-point line. Teammates love him. I think he's a great leader in tangible stuff. I think goes a long way for me. Now for our three front court guys, the first of which should not be a surprise to anybody. Joel Embiid, somehow not starting in this game. We made a video about it uh, a few days ago, just about how dumb the all-star voting or position system is that we end up with a guy playing as good as anybody, just expanding on his dominance. 33 points per game and still a defensive anchor. Got the Sixers playing some amazing basketball right now. Don't really need to talk much about that. But our next guy, talk about redemption. For Julius Randle, who is, I did not think he was going to be making my list. This guy was kind of a joke of a player to me after last year, just because of what we saw him do the year prior. And he comes in and he just stinks it up. I thought was the definition of empty numbers, but the jumper is falling. And this is a guy that I've always thought of, like as far as physical tools go and being able to handle the ball, pass the ball, grab a shit ton of rebounds. I mean, he can do everything on the floor. There's nothing that he is incapable of. There's just an inconsistency I think in mentality approach to the game. Also, of course, shooting and shot selection was a big problem last year. But man, when this guy's going, when this guy has his head in the right spot, he's a nightmare to guard. And he's a great basketball player. So shout out Julius Randle. He's making it on my all-star team. I think he will make the game. And for our last spot in the front court, we have to decide between a Heat player. And listen, at this point, I don't even know who I'm picking. So I'm just going to make it up as we go. Bam Adebayo has played 10 more games than Jimmy Butler this season. 10 more, and that weighs a lot. Both these guys averaging the same amount of points. Obviously, Bam has more rebounds. Jimmy has more assists. They are the two best defensive players on their team. Both of these guys are the reason this team is an elite defense still. Jimmy is the big time fourth quarter guy, and he has saved them all year. And that really does factor in when we're talking about specifically the moments. We're looking past the numbers, who's rising to the occasion for this team. Bam Adebayo has had some awesome games, especially when Jimmy went out and he had to really be that number one and carry the team. But we know who the number one is when everybody's playing, which makes it difficult for me to pick Bam. But that being said, has he had a better season? Who deserves it more? I think I'm going to go Jimmy just off of importance. Bam has played 10 more games. I think if that number was a little bit bigger, I'd probably lean Bam. Now to get into wild cards. I picked guards. Sorry, Pascal Siakam. I went with James Harden and I went with Drew Holiday. Listen, for anybody who's upset about Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton's not there all year. Who is playing point guard for the Bucks when Drew Holiday is not on the court? Especially Giannis missing games and what Drew has done in those games that Giannis is out for. This team has been incredibly depleted. They've relied on him to a level that they haven't really had to do previously, and he's kept them afloat. He deserves it. I think he should have made it last year. Some of those games that he had when Giannis went out should have woken people up a little bit. So I'm putting Drew in here. Sorry, Jalen Brunson. He's my big snub from the guards. Also, DeMar DeRozan, who's a guard for whatever reason, and Trey Young. 
not included here. Listen, Trey Young is putting up monster numbers this year. His efficiency is in the toilet. And the Hawks, they've underwhelmed. I don't think Trey Young is doing a good job of playing team basketball. I haven't liked the way he's approached this season. When it comes down to moments, taking bad shots. DeMar DeRozan plays for my Chicago Bulls. I watch him every night. Great score. He doesn't bring a ton else to the table. And the Bulls are also disappointing and don't deserve an all-star player. So, sorry. Those are my picks. Pascal Siakam, there's another snub. He was on a surge early in the year. I think he's definitely slowed down a lot. And the Raptors just, I don't think they deserve an all-star either. I mean, you see what happens to an offense of a team when he is the best offensive player on the team. He's an excellent player. This team is not good enough to warrant them having an all-star. So let me know what you guys think. Um, and yeah, it's gonna do it. Peace.